Hello and welcome to Balch Field in Norwood. We are here for another Ashland Sevens baseball game here. It is July 27th and we are about to be underway. Your 9-1 Ashland Sevens taking on 3-7 and seven Norwood. And Ashland coming off of a uh, pretty decisive win, 6-0 win I should say over Hyde Park yesterday. And they have a uh, Definitely a packed schedule this week as they're playing, I think, six games in seven days. As we have the first pitch here from Sean French from Norwood. Pitching to Mason Dushney, leadoff batter for Ashland, and he hits us one third base side. Easy play to make. That is a routine five to three ground out for Mason Dushney. Get you the lineups in the field in just a second here. As this is basically the last big week of uh, regulation play for the Massachusetts Independent Baseball League. And then we'll be off to the playoffs. Ashland tied for first right now as the current standings stand, I suppose, as this is hit fly ball to right field and caught. Ranging over to make the catch is Jaden Ryan. That's going to bring up Jackson Hornung. Quick two outs for Ashland here in this top of the first. The Ashland batting order for you. Leading off, we have the second baseman, Mason Dushney. Sam Farrell at center field, Jackson Hornung. Dominic Cavanaugh, Kevin Balowitz. Lawrence Tang, the designated hitter. Shea Donovan, as that's outside for ball one. Isaac Curley. Nick Calabrese, that is your Ashland batting lineup. So we get the pitch from Sean French here, wind up in the dirt for ball two. And for the Norwood field, we have, as I said before, we have Sean French pitching. His battery mate is Matt Mulliam. Over at first, we have Sam Tomasello. Second, we have Jack Cropper, shortstop. Rob Wachowski, who I'm told is the player to watch on this Norwood squad. That's down the middle for a strike, two and one. Over at third base, we have Mike Sunkar. And then from left to right, we have Joe Damari. We have in center field, George Talman. And then we have Jaden Ryan, who already ranged over and made a play as this has popped foul into the softball field behind us. Two and two, the count to Jackson Hornung. Jackson Hornung with a inside the park home run in his last game at Walpole. Did not play against Hyde Park yesterday. The two and two to Hornung. That's outside for a called ball. Full count. Two outs on the inning for Ashland. Quick two out first inning. Maybe not the start that Ashland was hoping for, but this has popped up by us yet again on the first base line. And Hornung stays alive. But if the Walpole game is any indication, sometimes Ashland just takes a little bit to get going. The bats aren't red hot off the rip usually. The pitch to Hornung. This is hit into center field. Center right, I should say. And two outs on the inning for Jaden Ryan. And they're going to go down one, two, three. The sevens are as we head to the bottom of the first here on WACA TV and HCAM. Bottom of the first, still scoreless here in Norwood. And we have the Norwood batting order for you here. Leading off things is Jaden Ryan, the right fielder, Jack Cropper, the second baseman. Rob Wachowski, shortstop. Matt Moliem, the catcher. Mike Sunkar, the third baseman. George Talman, center fielder. Sam Tomasello, the first baseman. Joe Demore, the left fielder. And Sean French, the pitcher. I'm told that there's a couple uh, interesting kids to watch out for here in this Norwood lineup. And we'll get to them as they come. It's the first pitch from Dylan Fonseca is a strike. 
Fonseca with uh, 10 strikeouts on the year thus far, nine innings pitched, 3.1 ERA is usually used as a closer for the sevens. Quick two strikes onto Jaden Ryan here. Lined up in the pitch from Fonseca. Hit on the ground, second base side. And Ryan will not beat it out. Four to three ground out for Jaden Ryan. And that's gonna bring up Jack Cropper. I'm told Jack Cropper is the youngest guy on the squad. He is 15 years old in one of his first years of eligibility for a normal Legion season. I assume the same age eligibility requirements are in place for the MIBL this year. As he takes ball one. Lined up in the pitch from Fonseca. Three balls to Jack Cropper. And I'm not swinging if I'm Cropper, but it's in there. Four ball four, a four pitch walk for Dylan Fonseca in his second batter. That's gonna bring up Rob Wachowski, one of the sluggers to this Norwood team, batting third, the shortstop. Fonseca takes a look at first and deals out of the glove of Isaac Curley, the catcher. Go through the Ashland Diamond for you in just a second. This Norwood bench is just as chirpy as the Ashland bench, which is an achievement in itself. The Ashland bench is, uh, I thought, unrivaled in its, in its trash talk from the dugout. But this Norwood bench seems to be just as loud. Fonseca taking a look at first. Looking at Cropper, who's taking a lead. Wind up in the pitch, and this is whacked up the, s ooh, almost splits the gap. They do manage to get the lead runner at second. Nice recovery from Hornung over at shortstop. Wachowski is going to make it to first. Two outs on the inning for Norwood. Nice play from Horning to get in front of that ball. That could have been trouble. Could have had maybe two runners in scoring position if that shot the gap like it was meant to. That's going to bring up Matt Mulliam, the cleanup. Lined up in the pitch. This is hit on the ground to the third baseman. He's going to throw it over to first. And no problem. That's going to be the third out of the inning. Ashland going to see if they can get the bats going here in the top of the first, or top of the second, excuse me. And we'll have that action for you on WACA TV and HCAM. Top of the second for the sevens. Four, five, and six do up. That's going to start with the cleanup. Dominic Cavanaugh, the first baseman. That's hit behind the backstop for strike one. Second inning of work for Sean French. Done a pretty good job thus far. Ashland looking to hold on to their Pretty stellar record as this has popped up behind the first baseline 
First baseman calling for it and makes the catch. Fly out for Dominic Cavanaugh, and that's going to bring up Kevin Balowitz. Bats have not been going for Ashland early here. Which is a shame, but as we always like to see the uh, aggressive base running of Coach Jake Obed in practice. Fastball in there for a strike to Kevin Balowitz. Wind up and the pitch. That hit the bat, but it's going to go foul for strike two. Not that many pitches on the evening for Sean French. Could be a long night if he gets going. Kevin Ballowitz with nine hits on the season as he takes ball one just outside. And he has a 290 batting average. So a reliable five spot for the sevens here. Wind up in the pitch. This is hit in the air. On the third baseline, ranging over to make the catch and will is the third baseman, Mike Sunkar. Two outs for Ashland here in the top of the second. That's going to bring up Lawrence Tang, the designated hitter. Ashland looking to see if they can get something going. Hoping to avoid six straight outs here. Pitch from French in there for a strike. Sean French is pitching lights out right now. The pitch. That is crushed to center field, right field, excuse me, but is going to be caught. Pretty tough catch from Jaden Ryan, but he has done his job thus far accounting for three of the six outs that have happened, and Ashland is going to head to the bottom of the second here on WACA-TV and HCAM-TV. Bottom of the second here, and this game is cruising by as we have had a 1-2-3 inning on all of Ashland's offenses here, and the Norwood side has been not as quick, but almost as quick as we have Mike Sunkar at the plate right now, the third baseman, and this is whacked to center field. Ranging over to make the catch and will with no problem is Sam Farrell. Ashland has not really been able to get the ball on the ground. This Norwood infield hasn't really had to do much work. Only the outfield has really been using their leg muscles, as it were, early in this game. The pitch from Fonseca is in the dirt for ball one. And that Ashland diamond for you. As I said, Dylan Fonseca pitching tonight. His battery mate, Isaac Curley, who's been reliable and also a pretty star hitter in these past couple games. That's in for a strike, one and one. Over at first base, we have Dominic Cavanaugh, Mason Dushney at second, Jackson Hornung at shortstop, Shea Donovan at third, and then from left to right, we have Kevin Balowitz, Sam Farrell, and Nick Calabrese. The one and two to George Talman, the center fielder. That's just inside. Fonseca was trying to look for that inside corner he caught him with on strike one. That's outside for to fill up the count now over on Tallman. Wind up in the pitch from Fonseca. Hit on the ground. And that's going to split the gap into left field for a base hit. First hit of the day for Norwood, for either team, I should say. My cameraman, Tom. 
It's really hoping for a no hitter. But just as he said in between innings, as soon as you start talking about a no hitter, kind of kind of jinxes it. And Tom says it's his fault, and I agree. That's going to bring up Sam Tomasello. Going to take ball one. Fonseca takes a look at first. Down and inside for ball two. Ashland has a tough week ahead of them, so they're really trying to save arms as much as they can. Oh, and that gets by the catcher. Pass ball for Isaac Curley. You don't see those too often, and Tallman's going to reach second easily on a steal. Reno. Fonseca looks at second and deals. Down the middle for strike one. I think it's fair to say that the bats are going a little bit for Norwood, at least more than they are for Ashland at this point. That's uh, another walk for Dylan Fonseca. Tried to hit the outside corner on that one. Couldn't find it. One out in the inning for Norwood here in this bottom of the second. First and second, going to bring up Joe Damari. That's hit foul. Lights coming on here in Norwood. Kind of a late start at 7.30, and we started just a little bit after 7.30, but the humidity has not stopped. Has been blisteringly hot all day, and has only cooled off by a couple degrees here. So we get a nice gust of wind. That's certainly needed for everyone, including these players right now. Pitch to Damari. Chase that one in the dirt for strike two. The one and two. See if Fonseca can find himself a strikeout here. And he does. Swinging strikeout for Damari. Two outs. First and second with two outs, and that's going to bring up Sam French, the pitcher. Obed giving his outfield some, Coach Obed, I should say, giving his outfield some signals to move in a little bit. It's the first pitches in the dirt to Sean French. He's been having quite the day on the mound thus far. Wind up in the pitch, in there for a strike. You hope that Fonseca is starting to find his rhythm now. Takes a look at second. Both runners not leading too much, and ooh, caught him swinging in the dirt yet again.
One and two. Inside for a ball, two and two. This Ashland defense is, and there's a strikeout for Fonseca. Two on the, two on the side for him. As Ashland gets out of a jam, and Norwood leaves two on base. We're gonna head to the top of the third in just a second here on WACA TV and HCAM TV. Seven, eight, and nine do up for Ashland here in the top of the third. As Sean French continues his pretty spectacular pitching performance. My cameraman Tom Hamilton says that he is currently going for a no-hitter in hopes of jinxing him. I think that's bad sportsmanship, Tom, as this is hit to Hornung, or excuse me, this is hit to the shortstop. I don't know who's on offense on defense right now. That is a six to three ground out for Shea Donovan. <laughs> I shouldn't be throwing shade at my cameraman, but it's all in good fun. That's gonna bring up Isaac Curley here, the catcher. Had a heck of a game against Walpole. Or excuse me, against Hyde Park yesterday. He had a heck of a game. Because Ashland has yet to have a base runner. Upstairs for a ball. Maybe this late start time has got uh, the Ashland bats a little, uh, a little sleepy. When they do wake up, they're gonna wake up. This is hit in the air to the infield. Ranging over to make the catch is the third baseman, and he will. That's Suncar. Nick Calabrese, who can only be described as a slugger for this Ashland team. We'll get you his statistics in just a second, but they are pretty ridiculous, if I'm being honest. The righty steps in. This is hit towards us, first base side. Stops right at the camera. Nick Calabrese on the season. Batting a 6.67 batting average. That's in the dirt for a ball. And a 6.97 on base percentage. This man is a machine. He has 27 at bats and 18 hits on the season. And he's filling the nine spot for this Ashland team. This is hit behind the backstop, staying alive with two strikes. Also ever reliable in right field, I should mention. The pitch to Calabrese. Upstairs for a ball. Two and two the count. If there's anybody who can get on base for Ashland right now, it seems to be this guy. Upstairs for a ball that's it's gonna fill up the count here. Two out full count to Nick Calabrese. Wind up in the pitch from Sean French. This is hit in the air out of play, third base side. Calabrese steps back in. The Ashland bench hoping to see if Calabrese can get them back into it. Wind up in the pitch. In the dirt. They're trying to see whether or not that hit him. Whether or not the catcher should be thrown down to first. It looks like he was all right on the walk down, but Calabrese draws the walk.
it's going to hurt his, uh, his stellar batting average, but those are the breaks. That's going to bring up the top of the order, Mason Dushney. Two outs for Ashland, and this is crushed to center field, ranging back, and he misses the catch. Everybody's going around. Calabrese being waved home, and he's going to make it. They cut to second, but the, it's an overthrow. And a two-out triple for Mason Dushney. Two-out RBI triple, I should say. And Ashland is fired up. And my cameraman astutely mentions that that is going to shatter the no-hitter for Sean French. That's going to bring up Sam Farrell. This is a nasty part of the lineup right now, especially if Ashland's got momentum on their side. There is still two outs, though. Outside for a ball. Sam Farrell flew out in his last at bat. Mason Dishing didn't even give me a chance to say that he was 0 for 1, and I don't think he cares that he's 0 for 1. Absolutely crushed that ball to the fence in center field. As much as he backpedaled, George Tallman couldn't get a couldn't get his glove out for it. Quick visit to the mound by Matt Molium. Sam Farrell at the plate for Ashland right now, hoping to see if they can keep this rally alive. It's downstairs for a ball. Wind up in the pitch. Four pitch walk for Sean French. Most likely not rattled if I'm Sean French. I've pitched a pretty marvelous game thus far, but Maybe a little bit of a cause for concern as the Ashland bench echoes my sentiments with a big uh-oh. It's going to bring up Jackson Hornung. Again, I say a very nasty part of this lineup to deal with. That full count walk to Calabrese is really going to really gonna bite Sean French in the long run, it looks like. Outside for a ball. Jackson Horning flew out his last time up with a, f with a shot to right field, as he is wont to do. Upstairs for a ball. It's been a while since we've seen a strike from Sean French. Looks over at first. Wind up in the pitch. This is hit on the ground to the third baseman, digging to make the catch, and he beat it. Jackson Hornung with an RBI single just barely beat that ball. We might have to go to the slow motion on that one. And an early visit to the mound. Oh, I, I, did, I, uh, I lied. This is not a visit to the mound. He's... The head coach for Norwood is making sure the call was correct on that. It was pretty much simultaneous from where we're sitting on the on the first base line. My cameraman shakes his head, and he had a better view than I did. But my cameraman does say he's safe. He is a little bit biased, though. After a quick discussion, Horning is going to stay safe. An RBI single for Jackson Horning here. 
He did score Mason Dushney. And really a display of the wheels there by Jackson Hornung. So that was a tough ball to beat out. It was a slow roller on the grass, but the third baseman, Suncar, Mike Suncar, had the, had the wheels to go get it himself. Two oh two Dominic Cavanaugh, the cleanup. Been a long inning for Norwood. In there for a strike. This is hit on the ground right back up to the pitcher. And an easy one to three ground out for Dominic Cavanaugh. That's going to put it into the inning, but not before Ashland plates two and leads 2 0 as we head to the bottom of the third here on WACA TV and HCAM TV. Bottom of the third here, a big whoosh coming out of the Ashland bench as Dylan Fonseca is in for his third inning of work. Big inning from Ashland, last inning if you're just joining us. And ooh, a strikeout from Fonseca, his third on the day. Catches Jaden Ryan chasing it. He's going to bring up Jack Cropper, the second baseman. Reached on a fielder's choice in the first. Big inning from Ashland, last inning. Where they scored two. Off of a uh, Nick Calabrese reaching on a walk and then Mason Dushney crushing one to third base. Then we had Jackson Hornung crushing one. I actually, no, I should say beating out a close ball, but also hitting Sam Farrell in, or excuse me, hitting Mason Dushney, who had reached on a triple in. So a 2 nothing lead for Ashland here in the bottom of the third. And already one out on the half. Pitch from Fonseca. This is hit in the air to right center field. Center fielder's going to take it and catch it. Nice play from Sam Farrell. Quick two outs for Ashland. And as I said, they might have taken a while to get going, but they found their stride in the end. Just going to bring up Rob Wachowski, the Shortstop slugger for for Norwood. Hit into the softball field behind us. Hit behind the backstop again for strike two. Fonseca having quite a game thus far. Or quite a last couple innings, I should say. He started off kind of kind of slow. Tried for a breaking pitch there, but it ended up outside. Ball one. Wind up in the pitch to Wachowski. In the dirt for a ball. Two outs on the inning. And as I said before, the Ashland infield hasn't really had to work all that much. Or either infield, I should say, hasn't really had to work too, too hard thus far. It's been more a game for the outfielders and more a game for the pitchers. Wind up in the pitch. This is hit on the ground. Splits the gap past second for a base hit. Two out single for Rob Wachowski. It's going to bring up Matt Moliam, the catcher. Good job, good job. 
Lined up in the pitch, hit on the ground from Molium, ranging over to make the catch is Hornung. Throw over to first is good. And Norwood's going to leave one on base as Ashland heads into the top of the fourth with a 2 0 lead. Top of the fourth here in Norwood. Things starting to cool down. The wind's starting to pick up a little bit. Good news for these players. So it has been pretty blisteringly humid thus far. So we have Kevin Balowitz stepping in after a massive third inning from Ashland. He's going to foul tip it for strike one. Sam French in there for his fourth inning of work. Routine 5-3 to three ground out for Kevin Balowitz. Nice play from Mike Sunkar, who has been ever reliable over at third base. It's going to put one out on the inning. It's going to bring up Lawrence Tang. 0 for 1 on the day with a fly out back in the second. Takes ball one. Sean French struggled a little bit last inning, but still out there. In there for a ball. French pitched a good game up until the third. There's no reason to see why he can't continue that effort. Over home plate for a ball. There's three straight balls to Lawrence Tang, the designated hitter. The 3-0 pitch to Tang. In there for strike one. Lawrence Tang hit a shot to right in his first at bat, but was caught. Foul tip, that's going to fill up the count. One out here in the top of the fourth. Ashland with a 2-0 lead over Norwood. Looking to better their already stellar 9-1 record. Norwood hoping to improve to 4-7 on the season. The pitch from French. They got him. Tang was absolutely certain that he walked there. But caught the outside corner. That's out number two for Ashland. Tang was halfway to first base when he made that call. The first strikeout on the day for Sean French as well. It's going to bring up Shea Donovan. Lined up in the pitch, down low for a ball. It's been a game of twos so far for Ashland. So that's a wild pitch from French for a ball. They have two hits. They've been walked twice, two runs, and two left on base thus far in the game. And up until last inning, Dylan Fonseca had two strikeouts. Wind up in the pitch up high for ball three. Three and one. The pitch to the third baseman. Upstairs for ball four. No question about that one. As Shea Donovan makes his way over to first base. This is how the rally last inning started for Ashland with a with a walk which somehow materialized into two runs. 
with about this part in the lineup, too. It started with a Nick Calabrese walk, and we have a quick steal to throw down. Not in time, going to get by the second baseman. And Donovan is going to be safe on the steal. Now, there is intentionality to Coach Obid's very aggressive and sometimes what could be called the reckless space running, but can't say it doesn't get results. Because if he's got the players to speed down the line to second, why not use them, you know? Isaac Curley at the plate right now. As the sun has gone down and we are playing under the lights now. Pitch from Sean French. That's going to be hit foul out of play behind the backstop. Shea Donovan taking a lead off of second. Two outs in the inning. Wind up in the pitch upstairs. Two and one to Curley. Also 0 for 1 on the day with a, a fly out back last inning. Down and out for ball three. That's going to be down low for ball four. Check swing, and he did not go. And Curley is going to make his way over to first base. French pitching a good game thus far, but seems to have a little bit of trouble getting out of innings when he gets himself up to two outs. So that's going to bring in Nick Calabrese. I say again, not the man that you want two on, two out for. He's going to hit this. Down first base, and it's going to be off the mitt of the first baseman. And one's going to score. Another caught in a pickle, and he's going to be outran. But one is going to score before that happens. Isaac Curley overran the bag over at second base and did not realize that there was no way he was making it to third, so he tried to go back to second, but then was chased down by the shortstop. Rob Wachowski. But not before plating another run. Ashland's going to go up three to nothing as we enter the bottom of the fourth here. Bottom of the fourth here in Norwood. Five, six, seven due up for Norwood, and that's going to kick it off with Mike Sunkar, who's been great over at third base today. Fonseca out for another inning of work as well. That's upstairs for ball one. And the dirt for ball two. That's hit foul on the third base side. The pitch to Mike Sunkar. Down low for another ball. Three and one. That is whacked right back to the pitcher, caught by Hornung. 
throw over to first is in time. Right place, right time for Jackson Hornung there as we record another six to three ground out. Man, if we had a stat on the amount of up the middle base hit Jacks base hits Jackson Hornung has prevented, that would probably be a pretty astronomical number. Just in general, in lifetime. There's a bunt coming in. Slow roller back to the pitcher. The throw over to first is in time. The bunt from George Tallman did not work out. It's going to bring up Sam Tomasello, who walked in his first at bat. Quick two outs on the bottom of the fourth inning for Norwood. As Fonseca has become more and more efficient as the innings are wearing on. Swinging strike to Tomasello. As I said before, Ashland has a packed schedule the rest of the week, playing Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. So this is hit on the ground to the third baseman. They're going to call it foul. They are indeed going to call it foul. So Ashland going to need to preserve their arms if at all possible, especially getting later in the week. They're going to be running on fumes when it comes to pitching. Not sure if there is a pitch count in the MIBL, but either way, Ashland, Ashland only has so many arms. The pitch to Tomasello. This is whacked. Third base side hits the light. but foul. Two strikes to Tomasello. Fonseca trying to see if he can get out of this inning in a 1-2-3, and he does with a swinging strikeout. We are headed to the top of the fifth. Fonseca is heating up here on WACA-TV and HCAM tv Top of the fifth here, Ashland plated a run in the last inning to make it a 3-0 lead. I believe this is going to bring up the top of the order in Mason Dushney. But I just wanted to touch on something real quick. My, uh, my cameraman Tom and I were uh, on the way over talking about the value that the nine hitter Nick Calabrese provides to this Ashland squad. And as I read off his absurd batting average and on base percentage earlier, it's it's a wonder why he isn't at least in the starting four, but we came to the conclusion that it's it provides a, a lot of consistency for this Ashland roster. And definitely, as we saw earlier in the third, it provides a spark plug. You know, if you have somebody, this is hit behind the backstop for strike one. If you have somebody who's so adept at being on base or just getting a hit in general to jazz up the bench, it, it doesn't matter if he's in the nine spot or he's in the four spot. But it helps a lot if he's in that nine spot and then he gets on base and then you got the top four going and guys like Jackson Horning and Dominic Cavanaugh to, uh, to bat him in. So this is a pass ball for ball one to Mason Dushney. So Nick Calabrese in the nine spot, providing a very vital role to this Ashland batting order. And when you see his stats, you, you just gotta, you gotta kinda do a double take and see that he's at the nine spot, but it makes sense a little bit when you think about it. So that's hit foul, one and two, the count to Mason Dushney. 
Fishing one for two on the day, had a massive triple to kind of continue the Ashland rally back in the third. Batted in Nick Calabrese. One and two to Dishney. Swinging strikeout for out number one here in the top of the fifth. It's going to bring up Sam Farrell. Second strikeout of the day for Sean French. Who's still pitching a good game out there. Farrell 0 for 2 on the day with a walk and a fly out. Wind up in the pitch. Foul tipped into the backstop. Two strikes to Sam Farrell. Wind up and the pitch in the dirt for ball one. And I, uh, I always like to heap praise on catchers in general, but Isaac Curley and Matt Moliam have done a fantastic job behind the plate tonight. It's upstairs for ball two, two and two, two Dushni. Nobody on base for Ashland with one out here in the top of the fifth. Still maintaining that three to nothing lead. This is hit to the second baseman. They're going to call it out. They're going to say it did not hit the ground. Nice catch by Jack Cropper, the young prodigy, the 15-year-old. It's going to bring up Jackson Hornung. One for two on the day. Reached with a hit in a, uh, I guess, a controversial hit as this is hit in the air. First base side. And Cropper again is going to make the out. That's going to be a 1 2 3 for Ashland. Some great plays from Jack Cropper over at second base to end this one. And we're going to head to the bottom of the fifth here on WACA TV and HCAM TV. 8, 9, and 1 do up for Norwood as we head to the bottom of the fifth here. It's going to start us off with Joe DeMori. He struck out in his last at bat. And it is turning into a little bit of a pitcher's duel. Fonseca and French going at it. Fonseca with four strikeouts, two walks. French with two strikeouts, four walks. But both pitchers have been out there for their fifth innings of work, respectively. Wind up in the pitch. Foul tipped into the catcher's mask. From Demore. Umpire just going to wipe off the plate before we start play here again. Fonseca, the lefty, wind up in the pitch. Hit to the third baseman. Bobbled but caught with his bare hand, but Kavanaugh pulled off the bag, and that's an overthrow. And that's going to be a error on the night 
for the first of the night for the clockers. Or the clockers, I should uh, the sevens, excuse me. was quite a recovery from Shea Donovan over at third base. Ended up bobbling it and fetching it with one hand, but could not find the accuracy on the throw over to first. So Joe DeMauri going to reach on the error there, and that's going to bring up Sean French, the pitcher. This is hit third base side, fielded by Donovan on the ground, but in time is the throw to Kavanaugh. Two outs. It's gonna bring up the top of the batting order for Norwood here. Jaden Ryan up to bat. That's in there for strike one. Ryan 0 for 2 on the day. Wind up in the pitch. In there for strike two. Fonseca wants to be done with this inning. Fonseca takes a look at second. Oof, and gets him with strike three. That's two outs, excuse me. Let's look at my stat sheet from last inning. It's going to bring up Jack Cropper for Norwood here. Cropper with some fantastic plays last inning. Got two of the three outs over at second base. Two outs in the inning here in the bottom of the fifth. Wind up in the pitch from Fonseca. Breaking pitch down low. Five strikeouts on the day for Dylan Fonseca as this is ripped to center field. Ranging over and making the catch is Sam Farrell. Ashland gets out of that inning. No damage done. We're going to head into the top of the sixth. We'll catch you there on WACA TV or HCAM TV. Four, five, and six do up for Ashland here. Kavanaugh, Balowitz, and Tang. So we have Kavanaugh stepping in. Kavanaugh 0 for 2 on the day, batting cleanup. And French out there for his sixth inning of work. In there for ball one. Wind up in the pitch from French. Hit to the second baseman. Pass the glove of Cropper, and that's in there for a base hit. Lead off single for Dominic Kavanaugh. Going to bring up Kevin Balowitz. And this part of the lineup, this four, five, six, and two, seven, has uh, has been kind of the weak link, I would say, of this Ashland offense in this specific game. So let's see if they can get back into it. As Kavanaugh's going to take off for second, but he's going to make it. Cropper couldn't get his glove out for the tag. Quick steal on second, the second or third of the day, I believe, for Sashland squad. It's 
Kavanaugh, Balowitz, Tang, Trio, really trying to see if they can get the bats going. Hit over to shortstop. The six to three is no problem. That's gonna bring up Lawrence Tang. One out in the top of the sixth. One out, one on, I should say, as Kavanaugh taking a lead off of second base. Wind up in the pitch from French upstairs for ball one. Three nothing lead still for Ashland. As Norwood running out of outs to, to get it done. on the ground to the third baseman, takes a rough hop. And that's gonna bring Kavanaugh up to third base. He's gonna be stopped there and a single for Tang as well. Would have been a routine five to three for that third baseman, but unfortunately that infield did him dirty on that one. And the Norwood coach coming out. Has he seen enough from Sean French? Yeah. Tough call for French if he has because French has pitched all right this game. One out in the inning. Two on for Ashland. Kavanaugh in scoring position over at third base. And I called it in the Walpole game, but uh, excuse me, Jake Obed is known to use the suicide squeeze. So this could be in the cards for Obed as he might be looking to add one run insurance heading into the last six outs of offense that Norwood has to offer here. But either way, Shay Donovan is going to step to the plate Donovan over two, but with a walk and a steal on the day. And caught in a pickle is Tang. But nothing's gonna come of it. French stepped off the mound to try to see if he can get Salvage out out of that. Tang was caught way off base, but managed to get the steal over to second. He's a designated hitter. Just stole second. How about that? Two runners in scoring position now getting dangerous for Sean French. Shea Donovan calls off Kavanaugh who is definitely taking off for home on the pass ball. Slash wild pitch. Tang taking a lead over at second also. Wind up in the pitch from French. Hit over to us out of play. Two and one to Donovan. Pitch from French. And a suicide squeeze. Oh, but a rough one for Ashland. Oh, that's just bad luck <laughs> on that. A suicide squeeze bunt turns into a fly out for Shea Donovan. And Kavanaugh was already halfway down the base path, so that's an easy throw down to third to get the force. And a non routine double play is going to send this to the bottom of the sixth. We'll catch you there on WACA-TV or HCAM. Bottom of the sixth as Ashland getting back on defense after an unfortunate series of events. Uh, an attempted suicide squeeze ended up being a fly out to the catcher as this is hit to the third baseman, but Kavanaugh again is pulled off the bag. Five to three did not work that time. And Rob Wachowski is going to reach for the third time today.
That's going to bring up Matt Molium, the catcher. But yeah, unfortunate fly out bunt to the catcher. That's a fastball from Fonseca. But it was an attempted suicide squeeze, so Kavanaugh was halfway down the third baseline, and it was an easy throw to third to get the double play and end the inning. Pitch from Fonseca in the dirt, but Curley keeps it in front of him to prevent the steal. Ashland still with a three to nothing lead here. As Norwood is running out of outs to get something started. Calling for a balk, but I believe Wachowski, oh no, they are getting a balk on him. Thought Wachowski called time before Fonseca stepped off the mound, but it was a balk. That's going to put Wachowski over to second base. Pitch to Molium upstairs for a ball. Two and one. One runner in scoring position for Norwood. This is hit to left field, foul. Two and two, the count now on Molium. Fonseca getting encouragement from Calabrese over in right field. The two and two to Molium. Ooh, breaking pitch, hit the outside corner, but called ball for a full count. Just outside. And the deciding pitch to Molium. Fonseca steps off the mound to check it in second, but doesn't throw the ball. Wachowski taking a lead. Dushni ready over at second to receive the cut. But that's going to be inside for ball four. Molim is going to reach on a walk. And Obed is going to take a visit to the mound, have a chat with Fonseca. Who has been solid thus far, but maybe shown a little bit of signs of struggling. So we are two on, no outs in the bottom of the sixth. Calls the whole team together. First and second for Norwood. It's going to bring up Mike Suncar. 0 for 2 on the day, but had some great defensive plays over at third base. No reason to take Fonseca out, I don't think. he's. It's only his third walk of the game. He's... He's pitched five strikeouts, six innings, the, almost six innings thus far. A little bit of a struggle here in the bottom of the sixth, but nothing too egregious. Just an unfortunate balk. Is that breaking pitch is in there for a strike. A one to Sunkar. Wind up in the pitch, outside, one and one. Takes a look over at second and deals, as Fonseca does. Sit on the ground to third, steps on the bag and easy double play.
or maybe it wasn't a double play. Thought he stepped on the bag, but maybe he didn't because there is a runner over there. It was a force to third, so maybe it just wasn't in the in the base path for Shea Donovan. He just wanted to get one and didn't have time to go step on third. Either way, one out here. Second and third for Norwood for George Talman. As they call it, dead ball. Tallman one for two on the day. Tried for a bunt back in the fourth. And it did not go his way. Wind up in the pitch. That's upstairs. One out, two on. Two in scoring position for Norwood. Is That's a pass ball. And the runner from third is going to come score. That's the first run for Norwood. Wild pitch, I probably should say on that one. If we're going to score at that. The runners advance. Norwood getting a run, their first of the day, on that wild pitch. Two and one to George Tallman. In there for a strike, two and two. Pretty big moment for Dylan Fonseca here. Trying to get out of a little bit of a jam. It's one out on the inning. Three to one now, the Ashland lead. And he gets him with strike three. Swinging strikeout for George Tallman. Fonseca's sixth strikeout of the day. adding to his previous total of 10. That makes 16 strikeouts on the year for Fonseca. It's going to bring up Sam Tomasello. 0 for 2 with a walk on the day. Wind up in the pitch. In there for a strike. Called strike. Norwood bench didn't like it. Might have been a little bit outside. Sake of the lefty. Hits that outside corner again for strike two. Trying to see if he can get out of this inning. Wind up in the pitch. Cracked to left field. Another run for Norwood is going to score. RBI base hit for Sam Tomasello here in the bottom of the sixth. And this game is getting interesting. Obid still not making any moves. Ashland defense being Taking for a ride a little bit here. A little bit of a rally by Norwood. Rob Wachowski and Matt Moliam have already scored in the inning. We have one on first. This is hit over by us to the bleachers. Dylan Fonseca had a heck of a game thus far. Tipped into the catcher's mask. Six strikeouts, three walks. One, uh, probably two, I should say. Two of his runs 
were earned on the day in there for his sixth inning of work. If I'm Jake Obed, I'm probably trying to make him go the full game when you look at the schedule for the rest of the week. Lined up in the pitch, and he got him chasing in the dirt yet again. That's the Fonseca special. That's going to be the third out of the inning, but not before Norwood plates two and makes us a one-run game as we head to the top of the seventh here on WACA TV and HCAM. Top of the seventh here. Ashland's last at bat of regulation as they have a three to two lead. Only one run separates the two after Norwood plated two in the previous inning. Sam French out there for his seventh inning of work as that's upstairs for ball one. The pitch from French. Outside for ball two. These pitches to Isaac Curley. He was over two with a walk on the day. He's been left on base twice. Or no, he hasn't been left on base. He was part of a strange pickle to end the sixth inning. And that's going to split the gap. It'll be a leadoff base hit for Isaac Curley. This could be just what the doctor ordered for Ashland. And you've got to imagine that the leash is very, very short. With Sam, with Sean French, excuse me. Norwood worked real hard to get it within one run. And they want to keep it that way because they have the momentum heading into their offense. They can just get through these last three outs of Ashland. And this is whacked into center field, but it's going to drop in front of the center fielder. Nice cut, but it's not going to be in time. First and second with no outs. And there's Nick Calabrese again. I didn't even get the chance to say his name, but if you need a difference maker on your team, look no further than Nick Calabrese. The bats are alive for Ashland, and that's going to bring up the top of the order, and Mason Dushney had that monstrous triple that we saw earlier in the third. Hit on the ground. You're going to get the leading runner over at third. But still first and second with one out. But that's Isaac Curley who's going to be thrown out at third. It's a big part of the lineup for Ashland here. If they're gonna, if anybody's gonna get the job done, it is this part of the lineup. Tushney reaching on a fielder's choice there. That's gonna bring up Sam Farrell. Up and in for a ball. Farrell is over three on the day with a walk. He's been left on base. But after that, we have Jackson Horning and Dominic Cavanaugh. Batting cleanup. Foul tipped for a strike. Nick Calabrese over at second, Mason Dushney at first. The pitch to Sam Farrell is in the dirt for a ball, but stopped by the catcher. No runners are going to advance. This is where the true test of Jake Obed's aggressive base running is going to shine through. Is he going to pull his runners and play a little bit more conservative now that they only have one run of insurance? And that's ball four. Bases are going to be loaded just like that with one out. Sam Farrell reaching on the walk. I don't know where the, uh, where the leash is going to where the leash is going to be for Sean French, but if not now, then when with him, I would think. But the Norwood coach has the utmost confidence, and French has pitched a pretty good game thus far. I can't say, my, say as I blame him, but it's just getting a little bit of dicey, a little, excuse me, a little dicey when you take a look 
at the diamond right now. There's a lot of sevens out there. Calabrese over to third. This is hit foul to the softball field yet again behind us. Mason Dushney over to second and Farrell over at first. And after the last suicide squeeze attempt that very unluckily didn't go in Ashland's favor, that's maybe not in the cards for this inning. Or maybe it is, who knows? Obed having a word with Jackson Hornung at the plate right now, and he's liable to whack one. Hornung one for three with a hit back in the third. Upstairs for a ball, upstairs and outside, I should say, for a ball. Almost went on that one. 3-1 the count on Horning. French gets the sign he likes, looks over at third. But Horning calls time. Obed yelling across the diamond over at Sam Farrell. Three and one to Hornung. Upstairs for ball four. That's going to drive in a run. And Ashland now has two runs of insurance with a four to two lead. That was way upstairs. I'm not sure if Hornung is going to chase that one. But either way, it's going to drive in Nick Calabrese. bring up Dominic Cavanaugh as that is hit in the air to the first baseman and he drops it and they're gonna call an infield fly rule on that umpires gonna have a discussion but it was not caught by the first baseman Ashland did have a run an out to give there. Is either way, they're up to two outs. A little bit of discussion between the umpires and Coach Obed, wondering if the run from third did in fact score since the ball was dropped. Still some discussion happening between the Norwood coach and the umpires here. And coach Jake Obed going back to third, the third base line. I think the main discussion is whether or not the run would score because the ball was dropped, but the infield fly rule was called a little bit late. So. Sam Farrell, or excuse me, Jackson Hornung over at first didn't have the chance to score, or didn't have the chance to move off the bag. Their way, that's. It's a puzzling situation, but we're going to have two outs here. We'll get clarification for you on if the run from third scored, but it doesn't look like they're counting it as a run scored because all the runners are still there. 
is going to bring up Kevin Valowitz, and he takes strike one. Still a four to two lead for Ashland here in the top of the seventh. Bases loaded, two outs. Strike two over to Balowitz. Sean French seeing if he can pitch his way out of this inning. It is certainly a jam for him right now. 0-2 oh, to Balowitz. Balowitz over three on the day. And there's an easy strike three called. Norwood gonna get out of the inning with only one run of damage done, but we're gonna get an update on what exactly the issue was on the calls there when we come back for the bottom of the seventh. Last inning of regulation coming up on WACA TV and HCAM. All in for the bottom of the seventh here. As we have Norwood down to their final three outs, trailing by two after a wacky top of the seventh. But Fonseca out there to finish the game. The pitch from the lefty. It's going to be whacked to center field, ranging over and making the catch. He's, excuse me, sorry, is uh, Sam Farrell. And with that, it is going to bring up Jack Cropper, who hits a ground ball to first, but called foul. Excuse me, that's Jaden Ryan. Called foul just before Kavanaugh got the step on the bag. Still one out for Norwood here in this bottom of the seventh. In the dirt for a ball. Fonseca trying to go for the full game here. And he's two outs away from doing it. Swinging strike for strike two onto Jaden Ryan. Ryan is 0 for 3 on the day with two strikeouts against Fonseca, so they are not buddies right now. Wind up in the pitch. Fouled behind the backstop. Staying alive is Jaden Ryan. The right fielder and leadoff man for this Norwood squad. Wind up in the pitch. Up and in from Fonseca. Wind up in the pitch. Swinging strikeout for Dylan Fonseca. Two outs. Norwood down to their final out, trailing by two runs here. It's all up to Rob Wachowski, or excuse me, Jack Cropper. And then it will be up to Rob Wachowski. Huge strikeout for Dylan Fonseca there. His seventh, eighth of the day, excuse me. Wilson County's got so many. In there for strike one. Fonseca trying to end it here. He's in prime position to do so after a wacky top of the seventh. The Ashland defense has come out and not missed a beat. Fouled into the backstop. Last strike for Dylan Fonseca here. Can he finish out the game? Two strikes onto Jack Cropper. The second baseman who's had a fantastic defensive game in his own right. Wind up in the pitch. Oh, 
inside called ball. Fonseca was halfway off the mound. Thought he, sure, he caught the inside corner on that one. One and two to Cropper. And hit batter, trying to catch that inside corner yet again. The first hit batter for Fonseca. Oh, he was halfway off the mound. And the Norwood bench is letting him hear it. That's gonna bring up Rob Wachowski. In there, fastball, strike one. Fonseca has not missed a beat, seems like. But Wachowski is a tough guy to face right now. Two hits on a walk on the day as this is crushed to center field. It's all on the center fielder, but it's gonna drop. Everybody's coming around. Triple for Wachowski. Is he gonna try? They're gonna stop him at third, but a run is going to score. Three to four, a one run difference for this Norwood Ashland squad. Sam Farrell couldn't truck hard enough to center right to get that absolute bomb from Rob Wachowski. An RBI triple for him. Three hits on the day, four hits on the day, excuse me. I was talking to the Norwood commentators earlier and I said, who do I have to watch out for? And they said, Rob Wachowski, and I, I believe them. The tying run on third base. Two outs in the inning. Fonseca staying out there. Still going for the complete game. Ball one to Matt Mulliam. Mulliam is 0 for 3 on the day with a walk. Done some good work behind the plate. Fouls that one behind the backstop. One and one. Timoleum. Wachowski perched over at third. A pass ball or wild pitch will tie this game right now. On the ground, over to shortstop. Hornung fields it over to first, and he got him. That's the game for Ashland. Stretched off the bag was Dominic Kavanaugh, but managed to keep his toe on first to secure the final out of the game. It was a scary one, it was a close one. But Ashland comes away with the win, four to three here in Norwood. We'll get you the post game stats and everything you need to know before we end the broadcast here. It was a dicey one, but in the end Ashland walks away with the win, four to three here at Norwood. Your player of the game has got to be either Dylan Fonseca or Nick Calabrese. Dylan Fonseca, the pitcher, went the full game, the full seven. He had eight strikeouts, four walks, one hit batter, and gave up three runs. Or you can also go for Nick Calabrese, who is ever consistent, uh, on base every time he went up with a pretty massive hit in the seventh and scored two runs, two of Ashland's four. And either the, the Sterney, the MVP award for this Ashland team, could go to either one of those guys. And on the Norwood side, you have to give it to Rob Wachowski. He had three of, of Norwood's five or six hits. Just an absolute monster and almost single-handedly tied this game up with a massive triple in the bottom of the seventh, batting in one run and being the tying run himself. But in the end, it was... The fielding of Jackson Hornung and Dominic Cavanaugh that put an end to this game. Ever consistent over at shortstop and first base, as well as some support from the outfield. So the final score for the final time, 
from Norwood, Ashland 4, Norwood 3. Ashland improves to 10-1 and one on the season, and with a tough schedule coming up, playoffs are looming here in the MIBL, and we'll have it for you on WACA-TV and HCAM-TV. We'll talk to you real soon.